In this video, it's a bit of a poignant one. We went on a road run in LE the 2CV yesterday. Uh, it was for a kid called Leon, and uh, there is a website associated with it, talkforleon.org. It's okay not to be okay. And the reason for that is he was 19 years old and he took his own life. And the staggering thing is, that is far, far from unusual. For men between the ages of the sort of teenage years, right through to sort of 50s, the most likely cause of death is themselves, which is a sobering statistic indeed. And that's why this run was in place. And, uh, you know, we had a lovely day, a lovely road run. It didn't feel right recording it, so we didn't, but we should have done because we had a lovely time hooning around the countryside in my favourite car. We raised a lot of money for a very good cause, which is to set up a bilingual chat line for people who are absolutely desperate. They're at their wits end because talking is a very good thing to do. I know I, I've been there myself. I, I've had some dark times in my past and uh, it's only counseling or even just an online chat with one of the many support groups that exist for, you know, just let you get your own thoughts um, into some sort of order. It's amazing how little it sometimes takes, but you know, when, when it all seems to be going wrong, you just need that help. You can't see the right way. And uh, I think one of the other issues, we always try to make, make some logical sense of depression and things like that. And there isn't any logic. We don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Um, some very high profile people, um, names that spring to mind immediately for me are Chester Bennington of Linkin Park, Chris Cornell, formerly of Soundgarden, and the um, TV chef stroke travel log um, celebrity um, Anthony Bourdain. All seemed to have everything they possibly wanted. They were doing the thing they loved and uh, make, you know, very successful at what they did. And yet they felt there was no other option than to say goodbye to this world. That's terrifying you're not in your right place of mind when you make such decisions but uh yeah it's a growing problem it really is and uh, the stats are absolutely scary i'm here in my happy place but uh sometimes it's difficult to find your happy place so uh, i'm very fortunate and uh, especially fortunate but this thing is back on the road ellie the 2cv i am having a marvelous time i think one of the things that makes it more difficult when you are in the public eye is you get so many comments, good and bad, and uh, the bad ones really, really sting. And by heck, have I triggered some lately by um, doing the uh, onto Fiat 500e electric car. Uh, you'd have thought I'd never featured an electric car on the channel before with some of the comments, but I have always loved EVs. The very first video on this channel was an EV. It all began trying to record my experiences about electric cars because I found them exciting, and I still do. I'd love electric. Does that mean I'm going to give up all of this? No, not in the slightest. I love old cars as well. And the two coexist perfectly happily. Uh, Johnny Smith of The Late Break Show is a perfect example. He's always gadding about in EVs. I believe he has one as his daily driver. Uh, yet um, he also owns a Dodge Charger and is currently stuffing a Honda K-Series engine into an Allegro. So, you know, there's room for it all. The two are not mutually exclusive. It's not that one is better than the other. It's not that one is a threat to the other. They coexist for now and will do for a long time. I know there's talk about banning the sale of combustion engines. Um, I, I forget what the dates were, around 2040, I think. Uh, they may have tried to bring it forward a bit, but we haven't got the infrastructure. It's not gonna happen, I don't think. I don't think these cars are condemned to become museum pieces just yet, I think. Um, certainly in my lifetime, I will be able to enjoy petrol vehicles. It might get ruinously expensive. That is a downside, but we don't truly know how things are going to go. Um, electric cars are not cheap. And uh, I know a lot of people are saying, well, this just doesn't fit the channel ethos because it's a car that's £489 a month. And I get that. Um, you know, that car was free. This one cost a bit more. This, this probably represents about four or five grand worth of expenditure. Uh, these two at the back cost less than £100 each to buy. And they're complete working-ish cars. Uh, but it, it's worth remembering that while an awful lot of you do follow the channel for the Banganomics, and I appreciate that, uh, that is um, you know, a large part of what we do, it doesn't mean that everyone who watches lives the Banganomics lifestyle. Not everyone wants to be mucking about trying to make things work. They just want to get from A to B 
and perhaps they find what I do entertaining so they watch. Uh, it doesn't mean my audience is entirely not interested in something other people are not interested in, if you see what I mean. Um, you can't please all the people all the time. Uh, that's certainly very, very true. But uh, yeah, I was a bit taken aback by some of the comments and some of them were unpleasantly aimed at other people in the Hubnut world and there's just no need for it. You know, we've seen Max Verstappen, the Formula One driver, his family members taking hate over an incident that happened on a racetrack, which is just insane. It's nothing to do with them at all. So uh, I think in this world, people just need to take a step back because perhaps they don't realize the impact of their words. You know, we're talking here about mental health and the effects such comments have on people. It can be devastating and it can, it, it's very easy to focus on the couple of negatives and ignore all the positives. I'm probably a bit guilty of that myself. Um, generally people like what I do and I'm very grateful for that. But I'm not saying don't give negative feedback because that's invaluable as well. If my sound's terrible, tell me. If you don't like what I'm doing though, is that really necessary? If people don't like it, the stats will speak for themselves and I'll look at those stats and go, okay, that didn't work so well. But I will also say this, from day one, this channel has only featured the cars I want to feature and uh, the, the topics I want to feature. So, you know, well, it's great to have Miss Hubnut around and she brings her own sort of mix to the channel. I'm still making the videos I want to make and that's always been it. It's what would I want to watch? And that includes brand new electric cars, believe it or not, and always has done since the very first video. And it also includes cars like Miss Daisy. I think I'm gonna take Miss Daisy home today. She's been sitting here for a few weeks. It's about time she had an outing and arguably she's better protected to cope with the Welsh weather at the moment than poor Ellie who's um, got a, advisories for corrosion and leaks water like an absolute sieve. I think we're in for a fairly soggy week, so I think the time has come to get um, Ellie in board. Whether I'm going to have to move Betty to make all this work uh, remains to be seen. She's a big old lump of car and, uh, yeah, and sadly quite ruinously expensive to run at the moment, which is a shame because I I'd absolutely adore this car. Uh, we will be getting to headlamp clearing again because these have gone very mucky again. Uh, the ones on the Daihatsu have gone quite mucky as well. So while I'm very good at getting the shine back, what I haven't yet worked out is how to keep that shine um, where it needs to be. I'm trying to work my way up to the back corner. Um, Betty is going to have to come out at some point because I can't even get through that gap. Uh, Daihatsu, we finally have an inlet manifold gasket for the uh, Daihatsu, I'm very pleased to say. We've had a battle going on. We, we found them in Japan and Greece. And we've managed to get one from Japan quicker than the Greek one. But uh, thank you, Mike, who's sourcing the Greece one. Uh, I have no problems at all with having a spare. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will enable us to get that car finished and actually get it out. That's our plan for the next week, hopefully. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm just fighting off um, a really unpleasant cold. It's been really bad. I've spent most of this morning just coughing and sounding like I've taken up smoking. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's not pleasant. It's not great when you're trying to record video. So that is a problem. But yeah, this is just about a bit of a fleet update as to where we are and uh, a bit of a head update as well. There's um, a lot going on, but yeah, please do think about the impact of your words. They can be um, huge and obviously not just YouTube, um, on social media about celebrities you don't like. I mean, there's just the, the need for people to give their negative opinions, I don't fully understand. Um, I'll give you an example. Vice Grip Garage recently did a thing where um, he, he was sort of pumping out videos that were almost TV level. And, you know, he'd, he'd come and talk to the camera and go, oh, we're going to do this. And he had a team helping him. I don't know what that was. I'm wondering if that was a pilot for what he's now doing on Motor Trend. He actually has a telly program. And fair play to Derek. He works blooming hard at what he does. I didn't like those videos, so I, I didn't watch them. But I didn't go on his channel and say, this is rubbish, you've sold out, I hate it. Because that wasn't necessary. I just don't watch. Just walk away. If you don't like something, just walk away. Uh, if there's a technical issue, then by all means say, well, your sound's bad, your picture's bad, whatever. That, the negative feedback can sometimes be helpful. But just saying you hate something because it isn't what you want to watch, I'm afraid isn't good enough. Um, yeah, all of us are just making the video we want to make. And I know sponsorship also causes a lot of upset and uh, I, I get your point, but um, the truth is uh, I probably get 
I don't know, five or six sponsorship offers every single week, and yet you see barely any. Uh, this is the second one we've done this year. Um, I don't think we did any last year, and we did one right at the end of 2020 when I did the Citroen Ami test. And uh, the truth of it is, I don't like doing the sponsored things uh, because I have to believe in the product. Um, you know, I've been approached by a shaving company. What, what were they thinking? Stupidly, I went quite a long way down the road and almost signed the deal and said, let's do it with a shaving company. I don't even shave. What the heck? And I'm looking at the brief saying, you must do this and say, oh, yes, this is really good. And it's just like, but I don't shave. It's insanity. And uh, I, I do get upset with um, other um, people as well. Um, Cletus McFarland is very, prond, pr uh, very prone to a sponsorship deal. And he said, oh, we're just going to do one a month. But now it seems to be every couple of days. And it does get annoying. But I just skip it. I still love the content. I just skip the sponsorship bit. I'm not interested in your fuel food things or whatever uh, is going on about so yeah it is difficult because we're all trying to run a business we're all trying to make ends meet we're all trying to maximize what we can out of the channel because when you rely solely on that channel and um, not just for myself now the whole family is dependent on the success of youtube there is a certain pressure there to actually make things work so you can't afford to just dismiss everything out of hand and that is the truth of it but yeah rest assured sponsorship sponsorship deals will remain very rare on hubnut because uh yeah I, I know people don't like them but they are sadly a bit of a necessity you know christmas is coming and uh yeah we need to make ends meet i'm already having to take steps to cut my expenditure so most of these cars are off the road at the moment um i think we've still got betty and Miss Daisy taxed and Ellie, but uh, the Matiz is just taxed and off the road. Giselle is untaxed and off the road. Uh, Tucker doesn't cost anything to tax anyway. And, uh, you know, I will be making more difficult decisions, I suspect, at some point, because, you know, we're all feeling the pinch at the moment. The cost of fuel is staggering, and that alone makes electric cars well worth a look, I think. Although, of course, we've just heard um, in the um, autumn statement from our Chancellor that electric cars from 2025 are going to have to pay vehicle excise duty which is effectively road tax you pay that vehicle excise duty to be able to drive your car on the roads they don't like calling it road tax because they'd rather spend the money on things other than the roads judging by the state of potholes and road markings in this country as a whole which is a separate topic of rant in itself but uh yeah that, that, that it, i just want to point out on the electric cars one that's going to back date so it will apply to any electric car bought from i forget the exact date but 2017 so if you're swanning around at the moment enjoying your EV with free road tax, I'm afraid that's about to change. But again, is that not fair enough? Why is everyone subsidising people driving electric cars? I don't think that's right. I think if you drive a car on the road, you should pay tax. Um, you know, I'm quite pleased. One car on the fleet has to pay no road tax. To be fair, she's not on the road very, very often at all, which is rather the point of exemptions for classic cars. But you know, there's people bombing around in electric cars, getting all sorts of tax breaks, free road tax, yeah, it, it, it just leads you to question whether it's fair. But uh, there we are. Things are always changing. All right, I'm, I'm going to swap cars and I'm not lingering up here today because I just feel absolutely dreadful and it's not very warm. So I'm going to bring out Miss Daisy, squeeze in um, Ellie to dry out for a few days and uh, crack on with things. But yeah, that's where we are. It's just a bit of a mixed one. Um, not your usual Hubnut video. But uh, yeah, that's where we are. Let's see if Miss Daisy will start and we'll go for a drive. The biggest challenge by far is going to be getting into Miss Daisy. I can't actually get in the driver's side without taking Betty out, which obviously I don't really want to do. So let's see if I can squeeze in from the passenger side. Oh, there we go. We're in. Oh, it still stinks of wax in here, by the way. There's another reason for getting Miss Daisy out is the only way to get rid of that waxy smell is going to be to drive her. There we go, I've managed to get in. And it's a bit the least surprising will it start ever, I suspect. And there's the oil pressure. Um, plenty of moisture still getting through the doors. We've had a wet and windy old night. Uh, try not to squish Betty, or Miss Daisy for that matter. Uh, there are advantages to the far too light power steering there. Well, will leave her to warm up a bit. We'll actually put some warmth on. 
and uh, yeah, it does warm up very quickly this car, which is a very good thing. And uh, all the cars need a wash, but we're running into issues here. I don't think I've got running water still up at the unit. Go and try my tap. No. So that still hasn't been connected. So I haven't got running water here. And the local-ish petrol station, uh, their jet wash is out of action. So, yeah, bit of a problem. But, yeah, there we go. You've heard one car start. I know it's not the most amazing content, but like I say, we've got bits for Daihatsu. Hopefully that means Daihatsu progress this week. We'll see. It's going to depend how we're feeling, I think. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that little car back on the road. That only costs £30 a year to tax, so that's another win, really, uh, compared to, I think, 165 for this pair because they're in the lower tax bracket, and we don't even talk about what it costs Betty tax but uh yeah we may well have to do something a bit different with betty she may have to come off the road for the winter just on tax and fuel economy grounds but uh yeah there we go anyway thank you very much for watching and don't forget you can head to the hubnut store if, if you want to support what we do uh, hoodies are now available and a much better quality don't use teespring folks they're terrible see you in a future video